Hello everyone. Today we're going to try a bit of a different video. I'm going to do more of a kind of a live form video here, but uh, we actually have a gateway professional of some variety in front of us here. It's a Pension 3 machine designed for a Windows ME that the sticker says and actually comes with a Windows ME license on the side. Um, so someone actually tried to recycle this at work. We have a big like uh, computer recycling bin and uh, so I had to grab it because it looked like a perfect like LAN party candidate, right? So I have a LAN party coming up that's actually modern machines, but I'm going to bring a couple of retro machines as well so me and a friend can uh, potentially play some uh, older games uh, together and everything. So join me today. We're going to take a look at this machine. We're going to crack it open, see what's in it. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any crazy specs or anything like that. I know that it was a machine used for office applications mostly, so there's no gold mine hidden video cards in here or anything like that. So we'll put in a few select upgrades, uh, and we're going to see if we can get this machine ready for that LAN party. We're going to clean it up, put all the components in, and then test it out real quick. So join me as we explore this machine. Well, first things first, obviously. We have to take the case off to see here. There's no screws installed. Uh, someone actually took the hard drive out already, so that's one thing less to worry about. Uh, I'll just pop in another IDE hard drive. Most likely, I don't think I'm gonna do any uh, storage or flash solutions for this guy. And oh my goodness, I'm not sure if you can tell on the camera there, but it is just gnarly inside. Uh, who knows how long this thing has been sitting in storage or under a desk running for years, right? So uh, the dust is just caked on everything. Uh, I'm not going to clean that out in here. It'll make my room extremely dusty, so I'm going to do that outside in just a minute here. Um, yeah, we only have PCI slots to work with, no AGP or anything. So as far as video card, I think I'll reuse the uh, same uh, Voodoo 3 PCI that I used in another video. Uh, I wish I had another card so I wouldn't have to cannibalize my other machine, but I don't think I have a choice here to get the most powerful card that I happen to have with PCI. But probably a PCI uh, Soundmaster card, unless the integrated sound is decent. So uh, we'll take a look. Uh, looks like we only have a network card, which will be handy, of course. Uh, it doesn't have an integrated network port, so that will be useful. Got a modem. Pretty sure I won't be using that for this uh, event here. So otherwise, I uh, got a nice set of ports and everything. Uh, Built-in game port for a uh, joystick and whatnot. The uh, power supply is also extremely dusty. I'm not sure if you can tell there. So I don't dare power this thing on until I clean that out properly. Um, it looks like the model number is a professional V933. I uh, tried doing a little bit of quick Googling on it, and I couldn't really find that much about it. So it's just a typical uh, consumer-grade Pension 3 machine. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take this outside, uh, wipe it off, blow dry it basically, just to get all the dust out of it. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe perform an exorcism or something to clean this thing out properly. So I'll be right back once that's done. And I'm back. So first off, gross. That was just disgusting so I had to go wash my hands right away and I have like black dust all over myself now um, so I ended up taking the computer apart a lot more than planned uh, basically down to the empty case uh, there was just so much dust built up uh, built up around it and everything that there was just no way I was going to be able to blow it out and uh, go ahead and clean it up so I took it apart mostly as you can tell took the motherboard out everything uh, just to clean it out you know even vacuum it out of some spots because there was just so much dust that was caked on so um, I'm going to wipe it down as well a little bit more to get some of the worst out. I'm not trying to do like the perfect refurb here, but I just can't in good conscience zip up a computer like this uh, when it's this dirty. So um, that does uh, expose the motherboard for us. Um, and it looks like we have two memory sticks. Uh, I think they're 64 gig a piece, 120 gig of RAM. We, we will, uh, 128 meg, goodness, this is not a new machine. So we will uh, take apart the uh, cooler here. It does spin freely, so that's good. Uh, and uh, probably reapply thermoplast and then take a look and see what the actual processor model is. Uh, try to wipe everything down or we'll place the clock battery, of course, as well. Uh, and it's just the dust is really, really caked on. So it must have sat in either a human environment or maybe a smoker or something. I'm not sure. Uh, but the dust is just really sticky. So sorry if that's too much to hear, but it's pretty nasty. So anyway, uh, another thing I noticed was that the CD-ROM drive I took it out just to clean it, and I'm not sure how this is going to show up on camera here, but this spot here has rust. Uh, I'm not sure if someone spilled something in front of the computer. It doesn't look like it because I don't see any other water damage there, so I'm not sure if this is just a, a broken cap or something in here, um, or something leaked on it, but it's just not worth risking not having a functional CD-ROM drive, so let's replace it. 
I may open this later just to look at it to see what the heck cost this. Uh, but anyway, I'm just gonna replace that and be good with it. The other thing that was a little interesting, so this is the power supply fan. Um, and it's kind of, I'm not sure if this is the regular two pin connector or one of the Dell proprietary ones, uh, sorry, gateway proprietary ones. Um, anyway, <laughs> this does not turn very nicely. That's a lot of force just to get it to turn. So uh, it, instead of trying to replace the fan for now, I'm gonna try for starters. Many of you may not know this, but a lot of the older fans or newer fans as well have a oil reservoir in the middle here. If you peel this magnetic or this metallic sticker back, you're gonna have to refill this with sewing machine oil. So I'm gonna try that and see if it helps before I look at replacing it. Uh, Cause yeah, right now it's basically non-functional, but it just will not spin without pretty excessive force there. So uh, we're gonna try the fan here in a second, but for sure here, I'm gonna wipe everything down and uh, then we'll see what we'll try next. All right, so we're gonna attempt to replace the oil in this fan or the bearing uh, in, in the fan. I cleaned it a little more so it's a little, at least a little better than it was before. So, and I'll preface this by saying that I'm not an expert. I've only done this a couple of times. I'm sure there's a better way of doing it. Uh, we're gonna give us a shot and see if it does work or if it helps at all. So first off, what you have to do is actually peel back this uh, sticker that sits here. And it's got a metallic sticker that's actually holding the reservoir in place. So uh, usually if there's a small place to peel up on, we'll try that. Trying to leave it pretty undisturbed because the idea being that you will move this back here. Uh, this glue is probably very dried out, so it wouldn't surprise me if it won't stick back. I guess at that point we have to use some uh, new glue, but slowly peel that away until the reservoir is revealed. Uh, I guess I was made a fool there anyway. So it actually has a, a small plastic plug that was pretty hard to extract. So I didn't have you watch me struggle with that for a bit there, but uh, we can actually see the reservoir down there and you can see how, I'm sure if it shows up there, but it actually is spinning. Um, it's not spinning very well. So we're gonna try this and just uh, add some uh, oil in here. This is just again sewing machine oil so if this doesn't work we'll just uh, replace the fan but you know it's worth a try right so if I get that oil to actually come out there we go. And then the idea being is if you work it into the fan it should get easier and easier to spin. Should is the keyboard here right? And I actually forget about that fam. So <laughs> I bought a uh, brand new one that does have just the standard two pin connector, which seems to work just fine for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall that back into the case here. The old fan was just basically too busted to use, so we're just gonna go ahead and, and install this new one. Should give us all the cooling we want. And obviously it's a lot quieter than the uh, original case fan, or not case fan, power supply fan that was in this thing to begin with, so. There we go. And we have the power supply. Before we close this up, I have to make sure that the uh, little two pin connector here is in fact connected. It's hard to see here, but it's got a little slot down here. Like that. All right, let's see if I can put this back together now the same way I took it apart because it was a little tricky to take apart in one piece here. Do the same thing again here now. It helps if you don't have it backwards, apparently. glove. Well, for starters, let's uh, see if we can take this uh, uh, CPU cooler apart and take a look and see what the actual processor is. So first off, we'll actually remove the memory modules to give us a little more space to work with. Should pop right out. 
Clearly one was original and one was upgraded at some point, so they're not uh, exactly the matching type. So uh, it's, of course, dusty here again, because why wouldn't be? I have to find my static or anti-static trusty brush here and get some of the worst out. It's just a very, very dusty machine, uh, to say the least. And I said it's not really free-flowing dust either, so let's see if we can get this cooler off here. Uh, getting some flex on the motherboard, I don't like it, but I don't think I have a choice. That is really on there. Come on. is not the other side it comes loose. Nope, it is not. Just being stubborn is all. There we go. All right. Let's see what we got. We have a Pentium 3 933 256 133 megahertz bus. That's actually faster than I expected, so I thought this was going to be one of the slower uh, P3, so uh, plus, it's pretty much on the fastest P3 I have, I believe, uh, which is a welcome surprise. So, uh, pretty nice processor. But yeah, we'll go ahead and clean that up and put some new thermal grace on because this here is basically just, yeah, that's the original uh, pad that it came with. And clearly, that's pretty much just burned off at this point. Uh, yeah, not a clean machine there, but uh, we'll get that cleaned up and everything and put some new thermal paste on. All right, got a little bit of rum alcohol here. We'll see if we can get the uh, caked on thermal grease here. It's just like clay. It's probably the only thing I can uh, can describe it as. It's pretty uh, pretty non-existent, basically. Um, it's like there's a slab missing of it. It's probably just burned off over time. So certainly not of the clean variety so it doesn't look perfect again i'm not looking for the cleanest or best here but it felt i should at least get the worst off here uh, especially before reapplying the uh yeah, i think that's gonna come off very easily oh well again not looking for perfect so uh to get it off the cooler block that might be a little harder because it is just on there i guess it's coming off yeah this is probably one of the dirtier machines i've seen uh in a long time. Um, and I'm not sure how I'm gonna get this pad off here if I'm just leave it on since the, <laughs> there's a hole there right where the processor goes. So it's not like it's uh, uh, gonna make contact with that pad that was there. So kind of doubt alcohol's gonna do that, but we can try. I see a little more mechanical force on this guy. Rubbing alcohol, or uh, sorry, not rubbing alcohol, but uh, my 1% alcohol did uh, virtually nothing to this pad here. So uh, I'm just going to go uh, off camera here and do this uh, with mechanical force, if you will, on the screwdriver. So we'll be right back. All right, so uh, after some, uh, I apologize for the uh, screwdriver scratch marks here. Um, I mean, it's an old one, so I'm not that worried about it, right? Uh, it's about as clean as it's going to get uh, compared to what was on there before. So. We're gonna go ahead and put a little thermal paste on the motherboard, or sorry, on the processor, and then reinstall that heatsink. There are many different schools on how to apply this. I have found that, at least in my experience, it doesn't matter that much, so I usually just put, it's almost too much, but here we are. reinstall here now this one was a little tricky to get latched properly it's on there there we go like a glove again we're talking about gloves all right so let's go ahead and get our memory installed as well Put this thing back together. If I can find the right place for the camera. There we go. All right. So 
It's one memory module. I'm trying to brace it with my hands a little bit here because, yeah, it's. Uh, Sterling doesn't like how much the uh, motherboard's flexing here, but we'll get it done. There we go. Let's put this guy back in the back in the cage, shall we? All right, let's get the uh, motherboard reinstalled here. Uh, excuse the awkward angle, just so I can get it on camera. It's a little tough to, uh, you know, install a motherboard like this. There we go. Get a couple of screws in. This should be uh, holding on there pretty good. This is the pointer. Got to watch out because I don't know how many times I got in the cut and bleeding hands. Um, poking my hands inside old uh, metal cases like this because a lot of these edges weren't as nice and bevel as they are these days. Nice and soft, easy installed, and everything's kind of sharp and scratchy. Got a little more careful uh, in the olden days, especially, you know, I.O. shields are still, I guess, the uh, the big one that really gets you. Got it. This is exactly a heavy uh, board, and obviously you're not going to have any massive GPUs like you have these days, so uh, not nearly as much to hold on. Seems like the last screw is hiding from me. Oh, found it. It was hiding. Again, this should uh, should definitely not be going anywhere, so. All right, motherboard's back in. All right, next let's get a uh, different CD-ROM drive put in. Uh, this one's a little newer, manufactured in 2003. It's like it's a Mitsumi brand. Honestly, I'm not sure where I got this, but uh, like many other people that collect old uh, computer stuff, they just have a lot of drives laying around. So um, I'm just gonna slide this in. Again, I'm, I'll probably take the other one apart at some point and take a look at it, but uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna trust something that has what looks like water damage or some kind of leaking on it um, in the future. So, just gonna install this guy. It's not gonna go anywhere. That's for sure. And yeah, you can probably see maybe some of it comes across on the camera as well. The the case is not flawless. Again, I'm not trying to make a flawless restoration uh, of the most uh, magnificent computer ever. I'm missing a screw, I'll fix that later. Um, I just want to get this machine in a working order, basically. I might tear it down later on. You know, it's got nice specs and everything. So, but for this purpose here, I just kind of get need to get this machine up and running for the event coming up here pretty soon. So we're gonna be pretty quick about it. Now, before it gets too crazy, we're going to do a little bit of cable management because it's going to get pretty cramped pretty quickly. So, uh, being this is a, uh, you know, Dell, uh, or sorry, Gateway, I keep saying Dell, uh, Gateway OEM machine has a few uh, niceties. Um, um, one is that the I.O. pin for all the uh, front panel and everything actually has a breakout. That's exactly right. So, we just slide it right in. There's no guesswork on where the pin's going or anything, which can be a pretty stressful moment in any... Uh, computer building so um, it also was set to cable select uh, on the drive so I'm not gonna mess with that I'm actually I changed this to the slave um, and we have a 40 gigabyte Western digital hard drive I'm just gonna slot into this machine as well should be good enough for this rig um, I have set that to the master so avoid let's see where's our primary ID channel the one that says PRI IDE it's a, it's a good bet so that plugged in. Cam. There we 
go. Cable connected. We're gonna try and like just get it out of the way for the power supply a little bit there. Not the greatest space to work with in this machine, that is for sure. Alright, this might be a bit of an interesting drive cage installation here. The hard drive actually sits like this, so let's see if I can get it from the uh I'm sure you can take this out, but that seems like an awful lot of work. Maybe I'm setting myself up for more work here now, but I should say. Of course, now I'm making it harder for myself here, obviously. see what's going on. Again, you're supposed to take that drive cage out, obviously, and I am not. Making it a lot harder for myself. Hey, what's life without a little challenge, right? See? Easy. <clears throat> or something. There we go. Eh, not really worth installing the last one there, but I'm on a mission. There we go. That is not coming out anytime soon, so... Leave a lot of space here, that's for sure. All right, let's get the floppy drive connected too, because that is critical on an old machine, right? Obviously, the floppy drive. And they gave you way more cord on that one. To the next step now, as you probably saw, I uh, have this uh, the CD audio cable connected here as well. Uh, of course, I should have done that before I did the ID connector. It was pretty cramped back there, but I got it in anyway. Uh, normally, it would go on the uh, header here uh, for the motherboard with the integrated sound, but we're probably going to install a uh, external sound card, or not external, an internal card, an expansion card uh, to handle that. So, next step now is the power supply, which has, as I probably saw earlier, a very interesting mounting position. So I'm gonna try and feed the power cables for the drives up here so that they're out of the way. That's gonna hang out like that. Let's see if I can get the screws here. Let's get this thing mounted. Because it is kind of an odd position again. It's a trusty screwdriver. Sort of hanging on there. Need more screws. Again, not a uh, flawlessly fixed up case here and everything, but compared to what I started with, it is uh, miles better. 
Well, my hands still get dirty touching it, so I'm gonna have to wipe it down <laughs> even more. Just can't really overstate exactly how dirty this was when I got older now, but hopefully this should let her run for a while longer. And for any people that hold this particular model or a gateway in very high esteem and feel like slightly offended that I'm not taking such fantastic care of this machine, uh, I apologize. Everyone has to machine they're extra, extra nostalgic about, and uh, well, this isn't one for me, that's for sure. I don't think I've seen this particular model before uh, running into it for this, so. All right, power supply is installed. Now we seem to connect all the good stuff. Power is probably good. Start with that. Motherboard, there we go. We need some uh, drive power, and obviously our floppy drive too. Obviously. I'm gonna very, very uh, neatly and fantastically tuck that in there. Yeah, you didn't see anything. Anyway, cable management, not the priority on this machine, I suppose. So, uh, we got all the basic components installed now, so uh, let's look at our expansion cards. All right, then. So, for expansion cards, uh, we have to start with a uh, trusty Soundmaster Live card. Uh, PCI, obviously, it's the only thing that's going to uh, fit in this machine, so this is an SB0200, and very well may have been a, um, you know, gateway, uh, not gateway, again, I said wrong now, I meant Dell uh, OEM card or something, but uh, it should serve this machine just fine, so we're going to go ahead and install that. Don't think we're going to do a modem, so we'll just slot it in here. There we go. A little challenging to install things on its side, right? Normally I'd do this uh, laying down. It's hard to get that on camera, so we're just gonna do it this way. And we'll connect the header for the CD audio. There we go. So we'll listen to some tunes. Uh, and then earlier in the video, uh, I said I would uh, look at the using a Voodoo 3 PCI card because I don't have that many PCI video cards and the ones I have are kind of used up. So um, I kind of want to keep the Voodoo 3 in the car in the machine I have. So I'm going to try something different. So this is a Radeon 9250 PCI, which is a newer card, but it should work just fine in, in Windows 98. And, uh, you know, some uh, astute observer here now may notice that there's a fan missing. And yeah, the fan had seized on this one, so it's off. Uh, you could get this with a, a passive heat sink, so I'm just going to try it. This machine isn't really going to stress this card, I think, that hard uh, with the kind of games I can run on it. So we'll just try to see if there's problems, you know, I'll install a fan or zip tie something to it or, you know, jerk something or find another fan like this that sits in here. So the fan here, likewise, with the power supply fan on this machine would just not turn no matter what I did to it. So that one's a lost cost. So we're going to go ahead and install that. So if we have problems with thermals or something, we will revisit that. Uh, the nice part with this one too is that it gives you a, a DVI out, which can be pretty handy uh, to put to a more modern display and get a cleaner output signal, uh, also for capturing even. So then this way for my little LAN party, uh, I can bring just a normal modern flat panel and use a, a DVI to uh, HDMI out. So. And this cable is for the modem, which I'm not going to install for now. Um, it's got the microphone pin header here, probably for the uh, sound card to connect and everything. So uh, I have trouble getting this off or disconnect from the motherboard. So for now, we're just going to leave that guy hanging. So clean. Another thing that's obvious will need a good clean is the front of the case. I took it off here and you can really see how yellowed it is. So. Uh, if you compare, <laughs> you can see the, the difference here a little between the uh, cover panel and the actual case. Clearly this was sitting in the sun quite a bit, so, uh, and if we compare it to the back here, you can see how much bright white it is. So, 
Uh, we're going to try and retrobrite this uh, and the uh, submersion method outside in the sunlight. So uh, I'm going to clean this off and then uh, dunk it in that bin for a few hours and uh, see how it looks after that. All right, so with the submersion method, uh, unfortunately you need a lot of sunlight, right? So I live in the Midwest and sure enough, it was cloudy on the day I tried to do this. So uh, I did the best that I could. Um, the temperature really never really got that high in the tub. I actually had to uh, add uh, hot water and also my wife let me use the uh, immersion cooker which actually uh, keeps the temperature pretty steady in the water. So that didn't help quite a bit, but at the end of the day, the results weren't where I wanted it to be. So. I did try for a second day uh, with some lessons learned and everything. This is the first time I've done this, so um, I think I got a little bit better, but sadly I uh, didn't get quite as uh, retro bright as I'd hoped for, but uh, this is probably good enough for now. So so sadly with the retro brighting not working out exactly as planned, we still have a lot of yellowing. Uh, I think it's faded a little bit and it looks, it's, it's really hard to see on camera and it looks a little lighter and it's not really as like, you know, bright yellow. Um, so some lessons learned doing the retrobiting techniques and everything. So I think next time I'll simply just get uh, a higher concentration uh, of the uh, solution. I think that should do it. You can tell the sticker faded a little bit, uh, and uh, it, yeah, you can still see there's quite a sharp difference between the side here, which has more original color, and the front, especially the back inside here is much uh, more you know white, if you will, than this very yellowed here. So, uh, but for now, it will just. Get the give the machine some character, I suppose, and I just don't really have time to to try not to run at it before uh, before the event. So we're just gonna we're just gonna let it ride. Sometimes it's uh, I suppose it's fun to stick with the original, right, and uh, see where we can uh, see what it looks like. Let's see if I can find this front part of this case is actually pretty interesting because it's actually held on by screws, like actual screws. Not just clips like most of them are, so you can't just pull this thing. It actually has four little screws, uh, which are kind of hard to get to and everything. Really hard to get to, actually. Um, I don't think I've seen many, if any, front uh, panels like that being held on by actual screws. They just seem to prefer clips in general. But again, Gateway had their way, as uh, did a lot of those types of manufacturers in the 90s. They, they found a design they liked and they uh, stuck with it, so. There we go. This one's gonna be pretty hard to get in here. Come on. Tell as well, the plastic certainly has uh, seen better days, but well, that's kind of what you get with the machine of this age. At least it's going to live out most of its uh, life now, remaining life in the basement, so it won't be uh, subjected to uh, the same kind of uh, sunlight that yellowed this thing in the first place. So, that was a hard angle to get to here. There we go. Oh, that was hard. This is even worse. <laughs> can't even uh, can't even see, but it's like way back there. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna spare you that and take care of that. <laughs> and of course, you don't want to forget one little detail, which is to replace the CMOS battery, because uh, I will be extremely shocked if. This one still was good, so I'm gonna take the old one out, check that, and put a fresh one in. There we go. All right, let's uh, button this thing up and uh, see if we'll boot. We'll be right back. Well then, first things first, you probably thought Hey Rick, weren't you going to use this for a network thing or a LAN event, so wouldn't you need a network card? And you're absolutely correct. I sure enough forgot to install it, so I got that popped in there as well. Now, let's see, will it boot on the first try? Sounds promising. Hey, look at that. Welcome Gateway. First try. It's doing something. I guess I don't even know what's on this hard drive. 
probably has an old installation of Windows 98 or something. In that case, we're going to reboot it. Because it's, uh, yeah, we're going to need to reinstall this, obviously. So, sorry, ME fans. I know this machine came with ME and it has a license key on the side there. Um, we're not going to be loading ME on this thing because, uh, well, yeah, it, it deserves Windows 98 SE, I think. Well, it froze up. I'm not too surprised. We'll see here if we can get into the uh, setup options here. Whatever button that is. Uh, tab, okay. Uh, where's the... <laughs> the option for doing it is flying by so quick. You usually delete or F1 or something like that. You never really know. Uh, it feels like each machine has its own thing. There we go. Got into the setup. So, all right. So, yeah, we got our uh, Pentium 3, 933 megahertz. That's pretty, pretty darn quick. So, the system time is, is accurate. That's weird. I thought I just took the clock battery out or the uh, CMOS battery out, but whatever. I guess I'm not sure if these gateways had an additional... Uh, um, memory function for the time or something. Well, that is the accurate time for this uh, video. Uh, or thereabouts. Uh, it's just about right. Uh, so, let's see. We have... I'm, I'm a little shocked again that it just, just booted right up. I know. It's not the optimal solution. Go away, NAC. Press menu, exit to clear. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's see, everything's enabled. Let's see, ID configuration. We got our uh, West Digital 40 gig hard drive detected and our CD-ROM drive, so all good there. The diskette, uh, our floppy's enabled. Let's see, video configuration, so primary video adapter is PCI. So clearly it's outputting through here. This is VGA from that uh, Radeon 9250, so that's clearly working just fine, so. And then we're gonna move from CD-ROM first. Um, and uh, yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and pop in Windows 98 on this thing and uh, reinstall it, so it worked. I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket. All right, so we have uh, Windows 98 loaded up here and everything, and I got all the drivers installed for the machine as well. Uh, if we take a look here, a few of the ones that are still missing. It looks like I will need to find the drivers for the network card, which of course we need for the uh, LAN part. And beyond that, I've installed the uh, Intel chipset drivers, the uh, ATI Radeon drivers, the SoundOS drivers, and sure enough, I was right. This was a Dell OEM driver needed for the uh, SoundOS cards. So I was able to track that down. So the machine is pretty much ready to go, and I only have uh, one game installed so far, which we could check out here. I'm not going to run a whole bunch of games and everything. You guys know what this kind of machine is capable of, but uh, here is Heavy Metal FAKK2. So, yeah. We got sound. We got everything. I think uh, one of the things I will do is probably add another case fan, because I realize that the only fan right now Besides the CPU fan, is the the fan that actually um, pulls in air through the power supply. And I would like to have another fan uh, actually blow some cold air on that video card since I actually don't have a cooler on it, right? Same thing with the monitor. Kind of spoiled today with loading times in games these days. Now we just got to wait for a spinning disc here. Great, yep. Well, it works about as well. I'm sure I can probably get this to work a little better by getting the latest patch, fine-tuning settings and everything, so it's a little stuttering. Uh, I'll figure out that later, but uh, in general, the machine does work, so we're just going to call this good right there. Well, as is the case with a lot of these kind of old machines, uh, there's always some problems, and uh, sure enough, that when I was at the LAN party, uh, the uh, machine started overheating and like kind of blue screening and stuff. So we ended up using a USB fan pointed directly at the video card and that seemed to make it run better. So I'll definitely be adding uh, a more proper cooling solution to this card or replace the card, I'm not sure yet. So I did add a, a larger fan on the intake side to get more air in, but it wasn't enough. So 
Uh, it was pretty fun though. We played Unreal Tournament, no problem once the cooling was sorted. And a lot of people were commenting on the machine, not really uh, thinking that it was an actual retro machine. They thought it was a old case with a uh, new machine in it, so kind of a sleeper build. So that was pretty fun. Got a lot of cool comments and uh, oohs and ahs and everything. So anyway, if you hung out all the way through this video, I do really appreciate it. This was a very long one. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like this kind of more freeform building uh, video log, blog, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a lot easier to edit and everything. It's kind of a fun uh, change of pace. I'll still be producing the longer videos as well, uh, for sure. But if you hang out all the way here, thanks so much for watching.